Good afternoon. I'm David, I'm 18 years old, and I'm quite nervous. Not because of this talk, well, okay, perhaps a little bit, but actually about my idea and dream that one day humanity will spread out into the cosmos and live on another planet. Isn't it a frightening thought to live on a dead rock like Mars, with no oxygen, food or shelter? Yes, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? So, why should we go to space? Have you ever asked the question why we, are, why we explore new continents like America, or why are we constantly seeking out the laws of nature? The answer is simple. Perpetual human curiosity. That was the sparkle which started all the famous inventions and discoveries. The desire to explore is at the core of our existence. Carl Sagan, a famous American astronomer, said that the surface of the Earth is the shore of the cosmic ocean. I think that mankind will soon set sails and start this cosmic adventure. I want to talk about the importance of space exploration and colonization and how could an average person contribute to this cause. Space colonization could be a solution for human overpopulation or a backup plan to avoid extinction. More than that, we want to shape a future which is inspiring for the next generations, a future which makes the world worth living in. Just imagine a future where we just stayed here on Earth and didn't look up to the stars. What would tell our children? What answer could we give to our biggest question? Are we alone? You might ask yourselves, why should we go to space if we can't, save, if we can't even save our own planet? And that's right. It is, it is not a must. We, we must save Earth and uh, solve problems here. However, Stephen Hawking, one of our greatest minds, predicted that humanity hasn't got more than 100 years to live on Earth. And that's when I became nervous. Maybe we don't have to take these 100 years for granted. But I refuse to imagine a future where my grandchildren won't have a home to call Earth. And that's when I became determined to make a difference in the world. If Elon Musk, one of the most iconic and brilliant minds of our times, had to spend millions to build SpaceX and send a sports car towards Mars, what could an average person like me do? But back when I was younger, I didn't bother myself with such heavy questions. I was dreaming about a ship that could carry all the people of the Earth, like Noé's Ark, to sail into the cosmos and find another planet. Later on, I couldn't abandon this dream, but I had to consider real possibilities. You might say that space is too vast to explore. The universe is endless, starting from the smallest particles to the immense cosmic voids and galaxy clusters. What could a tiny creature like me possibly do on a pale blue dot around an average star? I might not be able to build this ship alone, but if I could add just one stick to it, that would be a great accomplishment. So I took courage and said that, it, that if Elon targeted the Mars, I would aim at the moon. It's much closer. People have already walked on its surface. It's less habitable than Mars, but it could be the first step towards space colonization. So my journey into the known and the unknown of our universe turned serious when I embraced studying astrophysics. And this has led me to incredible islands in my life. And I mean it literally. It was on an actual island called Phuket in Thailand, where I won an honorable mention at the International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics. But the island I want to tell you about today is the one where I concentrated my passion towards uh, physics, astronomy, engineering, 
and the future of our species. When I was a child, I, I took apart everything in order to understand them, such as a radio or a fully functioning TV. Just like Barabashi Albert Laszlo said, we have taken apart the universe and have no idea how to put it back together again. Examining the pieces of these gadgets was similar to physics and astronomy. It was like examining the pieces of the whole universe. As I looked at these scattered parts, I realized that one must be or think like an engineer to put the parts back together again. This is what inspired me to build a low-cost 3D printer, by my, and I made it by myself. For those who haven't yet heard of 3D printing, the principle of the technology is building an object by a sliced digitalized model, layer by layer, using a specific material. In my case, that was plastic. So, how does this connect to space colonization? I once came across the idea of the European Space Agency, which was to build a lunar outpost by using a 3D printer. I was looking forward to the news about this project, but I could see no progress. Even Elon Musk asked, it's 2017, we should have a lunar base by now. What the hell is going on? I wanted to change that. Obviously, I didn't have the budget of a space agency, but I had pretty good ingredients, like my homemade 3D printer and a lot of ambition. The idea is to build a base on the surface of the moon with the help of automatic 3D printers. The building material is the lunar soil and a binding liquid with which ensures its strength. This would reduce the, the amount of required materials and the cost of the project. And this is how concrete is made. An inflatable dome transported by a space rocket would extend, and layer by layer, a wall would be printed around the dome. This protective shell would have, uh, would have a protective function against the harsh environmental conditions, such as micrometeorites, radiations, and strong temperature gaps. The aim of my research was to study the feasibility, the endurance of such a habitat to the harsh environmental conditions, and to put these ideas into practice. After creating the proper lunar soil simulant, from basalt stone, I carried out measurements about the physical properties of concrete to, to design the structure of the base. Then I had to rebuild my printer in order to use lunar soil as building material by creating a new printing head, an innovation which can print concrete instead of plastic. Finally, Using adequate simulations, I could design a base and print a scale model too, resistant to the harsh surface conditions. This way, I proved the feasibility of the initial idea. Further studies should be done, for example, developing uh, an automatic mobile 3D printer rover. However, my prototype was sufficient to simulate the idea of, sa sa uh, of shaping such a dome structure. This project offered me a lot of new perspectives. After winning the National Scientific Youth Conference and the Innovation Contest in Hungary, I was given the privilege to take part at the, in, at the European Union Contest for Young Scientists held in Tallinn, where I gained the European Space Agency Special Prize, namely one week visit to Europe's largest space center in the Netherlands. This might be a grain of sand on a tiny island on our cosmic journey, but I truly believe that island by island we could finally reach our long-awaited destination and humanity will become a space-faring and a multiplanetary species. Don't forget, every single person has the power to become a cosmic sailor. Don't throw away your innate curiosity. Be a pioneer and go beyond the horizon. 
And always keep in mind Mr. Hawking's words, remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Thank you.